and good morning, good afternoon and evening to everyone who is joining us on this call. Um, jumping straight into it, you know, um, with the analysis that Scott has been doing about the dollar index, um, looking at how Kim Hong has been looking at the news to be released. There is quite a number of news to be released this week for the euro. In particular, things that I'm paying attention to here, looking at the Forex Trading Asia dot com economic calendar. <clears throat> Today we are in Tuesday. Uh, at this point, I would differ a little bit. I would normally pay attention to building permits, but the numbers are not likely to change that much for the US building permits. So I would ignore this a little bit more <clears throat> at this point. But what I'll pay attention to is um, on Wednesday, where we do have, no, not Wednesday, on Thursday morning, when we do have the FOMC data to be released and press conference rate statements and decisions. Um, this will bring that volatility again back into the US dollar. In this case, I think that we might see further upside on the dollar, which means that we'll probably see the US dollar strength being a bit more sustained at this point. But following on from that, with the focus on the Euro, <clears throat> what we do have on Thursday is a whole bunch of Euro data to be released. In particular, things to pay attention to, um, you all know that I'm not going to focus too much on individual countries because a, Spanish, a good Spanish GDP number is not going to change the Euro dollar too much or a French PMI number is not going to change the Euro dollar too much. Pay attention to the Eurozone data as a whole. You can see here manufacturing PMI numbers expected to go from a 61.4 to a 60.3. Services PMI number expected to go from a 59 to a 58.5. So just based on these two data alone, if it does come out at that 60.3, if it does come out at that 58.5 number, what this actually could signal is that although manufacturing and services PMI numbers are still in that expansionary phase, it has slowed down. It slowed down from its 61.4, it slowed down from its 59 level. It looks like it's, it can't go on at 100 km per hour all the time. It's slowing back down a little bit. So something to pay attention to. And if manufacturing and services PMI is slowing down, this could mean a little bit of weakness to be applied onto the Euro dollar. Following from that, we do have the ECB LTRO data to be released on Thursday, and then some press, uh, some members speaking from that point. And then I'll tell you more about the pound tomorrow, quite a big move to be happening on the pound possibly. Following from that, we have on Friday, <clears throat> more ECB members speaking and US Fed Chair Powell speaking as well. So you can see that we have a lot of data to be released. We have a lot of press conferences and um, members speaking about, coming from the central banks, speaking about possibly indicating performances on the Euro dollar and also other currency pairs. So what this could mean in terms of the charts is the Euro dollar here on H4 time frame. Very recently, we've just seen that turn slightly back downwards from 1.1738 now turning back down a little bit. My initial plan, my initial thought was that we could see the Euro dollar come further up, testing 1.1766 before turning back down. I think that it might not go all the way at this point. What we might actually see it sit across a little bit, sit across a little bit or start turning back down. What you could be looking for is on later today, probably more tomorrow, and then on Thursday morning, is for the euro dollar to break below 1.17. Break below 1.17. If it does break below 1.17 at about that point, we could see it test significantly lower. So what you could be looking for it is to test 
1.1629. If that does happen, you're looking at about a 30 pip stop loss for a good 60 pip take profit level towards the next support at 1.1629. Again, below 1.17, 30 pip stop loss, 60 pip take profit level, one is to two risk reward ratio towards the downside. What you should be noticing here is that although it looks like we could see downside on the euro dollar, this does not look super attractive. Only a 60 pip profit towards that support level. What I'm actually more focused towards is the euro pound. The euro pound, when I last spoke about it last week, saying that if it does move upwards, we could see it test at 85, 90 level is done that exactly, despite that big volatility before it happened. We saw that move upwards. At this point, if the euro dollar does drop, if the euro dollar does drop, and we could see, um, why I tell you that I think we could see some big moves on the pound, I'll tell you more in detail tomorrow, is we might see the pound bounce back up, talking about the drivers tomorrow. If the pound dollar does go up, if the euro dollar does drop, this could be that good trading opportunity back down towards that 85, 38 level. We could be looking at a good 30 pips, 40 pips take profit, but I think that we might actually even see it go towards that 84, 97 level for a good 80 pips profit towards the downside. So what you should be looking for is for that rejection, rejection of the 85, 90 level driven by the downside in the euro dollar, driven by the potential bounce in the pound dollar. What you could be looking for is a selling opportunity at below 85.80. Stop loss of 20 pips, take profit level first one, maybe about 40 pips, and then following on from that 80 pips, you're looking at a one is to two and a one is to four risk reward ratio towards the downside for the euro pound. But a lot more detail for that to be talked about when we look at the pound dollar in detail tomorrow. With that said, I will pass it back to you, Scott. Thanks for that, Jin. And guys, I have...